My name is um, Mary Gaddams, and I actually founded Racing the Planet um, back in 2002. Uh, as, as you know, Racing the Planet is uh, 20 years old um, now, and we first um, we first launched the Last Desert um, Ultra Marathon back in 2006. So this call is for those who are taking part in the Last Desert in, in 2024, those who are interested in taking part in a future Last Desert event, um, those uh, family and friends or those family and friends who are interested in joining, and then those who will be taking part in the first Antarctica Ultra Marathon, which we will also explain later. So let me first um, get started by um, moving to the uh, table of contents. Um, here, here you'll see that um, we're going to go over just briefly the itinerary for the last desert, explain how that the expedition ship works, go over the format of the race, um, go over the different um, possible locations for the race, and then um, also, also talk about uh, the friends and family experience and the Antarctic um, Ultra Marathon and then go over some frequently asked questions. Uh, we're gonna have some top tips for um, racing and we're also going to have two past um, uh, racers who took part in the last desert who will also be giving you some, some tips and telling you how to maximize the overall e experience of the, of, the, uh, of the 11 day um, expedition. Okay, so first what I uh, wanted to do, I first wanted to start by just showing you how um, beautiful that the, that the last de desert is. So most of these um, photos that I've actually included here are actually from um, last year. So I just wanna take you through some of the landscape that you will see um, when you go down to the Antarctic. So one, one thing I can guarantee you, you will, you will absolutely see penguins. And there um, is just one, one of the racers. You, you'll see that they're dressed quite in a quite a minimalist fashion. And just some more of the landscapes, some of the, um, some of the icebergs um, that I will also guarantee that you will see. Some more penguins, just some more of the incredible views. Um, there you you can see that actually some of the um, some of the race courses are actually quite quite uh, flat. And there you, you'll see you will also see some of the some of the spectacular mountains. And just some more some more photos um, so you can see what it's what it's actually like. And here this is a photo from Deception Island. Um, and you can see that's that is actually a formal volcano. Okay, so just just getting started on the main on the main presentation. Um, let's see here, hold on a second. What's it doing? Um, okay, what what is the last desert? It is the only multi-stage race in the in the Antarctic. There is um, no other foot race um, down in the Antarctic that goes over multiple days. Um, 2024 is going to be our 10th race. We typically um, hold the last desert every other year. It's 200, it can be up to 250 kilometers, um, up to about six stages. Um, every stage is typically in a different location. And it really is a chance to experience Antarctica in, in a very unique way. Only about 400 people have, have ever completed the race. But ever, everything about the last desert is dependent on the weather. So one, if, if the first piece of advice I'd like to offer is prepare for the unexpected. Okay, why is Antarctica so special? There's so many reasons. It, it will definitely definitely be the most pristine place that you've ever seen. There is incredible wildlife there. You'll see penguins, whales, seals, um, different types of birds. 
And what is what is the best part of the last desert in the Antarctic is you will be able to spend as much time as possible on shore. If if you don't want to be on the on the boat all the time, depending on weather, we we will be on the shore, giving you a chance to truly experience the the, the Antarctic and not just see it. But it is definitely where Mother Nature is in charge. Okay, where where is Antarctica. So where where we, we race, believe it or not, is actually not that far from su southern Argentina. You can see on the on the left map, um, basically the the section um, with the green and brown. So that is our that is actually su southern Argentina, southern uh, Chile, and that's where we pick up the ship from from the port of Ushuaia, and from there we we go through what's called the Drake Passage. And you can see the big um, white circle and then how it sort of points up at the top. Well, those are the, the areas where we will actually be staging the race. And you can see on the, on the right hand um, picture where we've got, a, we've got a square around the actual area where, where we will be racing. Okay. Um, the the host town is is Ushuaia, and it is um, also known as as a base for Patagonia. The uh, race starts uh, really just as soon as as we board the ship. So you'll be spending ten, 10 nights, eleven days on the ship, and the entry fee um, in, includes pretty much everything everything on board once once you get on the ship. The only thing that it doesn't include, I believe, are Wi-Fi, and then also if you have any um, any special types of uh, drinks that that you would like. But of course, all, all the water is provided. So the, um, so the, so it takes place from the 26th of November until the 6th of December. We basically have to meet in, in Ushuaia by 12 noon on the on the 26th, and you can leave any time after um, after 9 a.m. on the on the morning of December 6th. But we recommend that everyone leave in in the afternoon just in case. It's basically two days um, crossing the Drake Passage. Um, and we will start very early on the morning of the 29th. Okay, what is the um, ex expedition ship? Well, it's also known as the base camp, and this is your, your home for the week. This is how we get transported to the, to the Antarctic. This serves as our, as our campsite for the, for the week, and it's where that we, where that we sleep e each night. We also eat typically breakfast, lunch, and dinner. However, during the race, Many times you will probably have um, snacks and possibly a, a meal on shore. Okay. Like what what is um what is I the like hello? Okay, what what is the um what is the base camp the the expedition ship? Okay, it is a Dutch ship and it is it is owned by Oceanwide. It's the seventh time that we've um, gone with um, Oceanwide down to to the Antarctic. This ship, Plancius, it um, accommodates up to about 108 passengers. There's 53 cabins on it and uh, for, 47 staff, and in, including about. Um, about eight ex expedition guides and a medical doctor. We we will also have one of our own med medical doctors with us, Dr. Mark Ellis, and so there there will, will be two. And you will sleep in uh, twin, triple, or quadruple cabins, and all have private bathrooms. But even though the ship is is the most amazing camp that that we've ever had. Don't don't think that it's um, going to be an easy race. And then here on the next slide, you can see um, that is you can see on the top right that is a typical two two person cabin. And then you can see on the one on the uh, bottom right that is a a three person cabin. There are also some four person cabins. And here here is another full picture of the ship. Okay, the format of the race. The, the format of the race is a different from our, from our normal hot desert um, races, but, but yet in, in some ways it is, it is very similar. 
So a course is set for each each stage, but the racers um, must complete the course as as many times as possible in the in the set time. And the winner is the person who completes the most overall distance um, during the six stages in that in that given uh, time. So a typical a typical race would be possibly stage one up up to 100 kilometers stage two maybe up to 42 kilometers stage three four five maybe 20 or 30 um, kilometers and i i will explain later um how how the exact um course works but but the distances are pretty much anywhere from from one one k to probably about thir 13 kilometers And the the last desert uh, will will be directed by Hernan Garcia, who also d directed the last desert last year. In in two thousand and twenty two, okay. How does how does a typical stage work? Okay, typical stage works is that we have a a briefing the previous day, and and at that briefing we will tell you the the expected location the course distance, the, the start time, and the plan time on shore. So the next day, we, we will give you a two hour warning to the, to the start. And normally though, we, we do know the night before, but if something changes over, overnight, if the weather changes, that start could be possibly delayed. Okay, and so the previous night before each stage, um, you should be packing your, your backpack, getting your drop bag ready and your food bag ready for the stage. And then we, we will meet um, typically in a certain area of the ship and you'll normally meet with your roommate as you will assign each, each other out of the ship. And then we will board as Zodiacs. And once we get off the Zodiacs, we will take a very short walk to the, to the start line. Um, and on the ship, um, you will have uh, waterproof boots and you'll just take those waterproof boots off and then put on your trail running shoes. And, and then during the day, we will, we will race. Um, and then at, at the end of each stage, uh, you'll have access to your drop bag and you will, uh, you will change, you will put your waterproof boots back on, you'll put your uh, waterproof pants, jacket, and then we, we will go back to the ship by Zo Zodiac. And then that, that same day, we will have dinner and then we'll have a briefing for the, for the next day. And then you'll rest, of course. Okay, so the, the one thing about the ant about the last desert in the Antarctic is you should always pre prepare for the unexpected. So that means the start time may change, the distance could change, the end time may change, um, the time on the course may, may change, a stage may in certain circumstances be more than one, one day or there could be two, two stages in one day. So everything is based on, on the weather and it, and it doesn't just mean the temperature or whether it's raining or snowing, but actually a lot has to do with the wind because the zodiacs can only travel in a certain level of a wind. So if there's one, one thing, always, uh, always know that everything can change. Okay, what is a, uh, what is a typical um, six stage course like in the Antarctic? So this is a typical um, course actually from 2018. And you can see that we, uh, the first stage was on King, King George Island and the most distance that, that was run was 80, um, 80 kilometers. And that was done in, in roughly about 10 hours. And then the next, the next stage was on uh, Danko Island. And the course, the most completed there was only 32 kilometers. And then we went to Paradise Bay for stage three, and we were able to complete 72 kilometers. And then we went to Dorian Bay and the top person completed 67 kilometers. And then we did a short, um, the person uh, who was winning actually did a short um, stage on five and actually finished it and reached the 250 um, 50 kilometers. 
but very, very much um, these distances could, could be quite different each day. And the, the basic goal is to, is to run, cover as much as you can in a certain period of time. Okay, you can see um, we actually use um, bright pink um, bags filled with snow to mark the course. Okay, and here, here you can see how that how that we get to shore. These are the these are the different zodiacs. Zodiacs, they're rubber boats. They carry up to ten people. I think the Plancius expedition ship has about ten zodiacs. So these are actually driven by their expert guides. There are some rare rare times when they'll ask you to paddle in the water to um, try to uh, try to get on shore. They they will give you waterproof boots. So you, you do not need to buy any um, special boots. They are excellent boots. And in fact, our staff typically keep the boots on when, when that we're on shore because they are so, so warm and waterproof. But it's, it is really important that um, two of your most important gear items are to have a sort of Gore-Tex um, waterproof uh, pants and jackets, um, mainly for, for when you're on the uh, Zodiac going to and from the course. And, and there you can see one of the racers is actually getting, um, getting off the, the Zodiac. So you will be trained as, as to how to get on and off the, these Zodiacs. And every landing is typically different. Some are, some are very, very easy. Others are, are just a, a little more di difficult, but they always, the, the expedition guides are very, very good at, at making it relatively easy for everyone. And, and there you can see the Zodiac is either going, it what looks, looks like it's going too, too shore and it looks like there was a lot of snow on, on that, that day. So you, you can get splashed with uh, water. Okay, the um, different locations for the race. Um, I'm actually going to have the course director, um, Hernan Garcia, go over these. Um, Sam, are, are you able to um, are you able to un unmute um, Hernan? Let me try. I think Hernan can unmute, unmute himself. Yeah, I just did. Okay. Does uh, can everybody he hear me? Okay, because I have a really bad uh, internet connection here. Yes, no, it's fine, Hernan. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, uh, uh, hello, everybody. I'm not going to say good day or good night. I, I don't know. Everybody is in so many different places. So, so hello is, is better probably for this occasion. So, so yeah, I was lucky to be uh, part of the uh, course team uh, for uh, two, two events in, in, uh, in the last desert uh, in 2014 and 2022. And uh, absolutely, the uh, location is is uh, the most beautiful place I've been, at least in my life. So, the um, basically uh, the way we uh, approach the different locations is the area is is pretty much divided into the uh, the uh, South uh, Shetland Islands, which which are the uh, line of islands that you see on on the top of the uh, of the map there, and then the uh, the proper Antarctic Peninsula. So. The, um, the closest place to where we start out of Ushuaia is uh, King George Island, uh, which is right in the map on top there. And that is, is uh, one of the best locations for us to start bend. Uh, it has uh, multiple flat areas as well as some, some hilly terrain and, and, and we can lay down a very, very, a very long, long course. Um, every other location, including King George, I should say, is, is as Mary was saying, is, is going to be determined, um, you know, plan. We'll try to Hernan, you're uh, breaking up. Um, okay, I will... Um... Hernan, I will just go over the rest of the courses. I just, I wanted everyone to meet Hernan. He will be again, directing the course. Um, and he, he does an excellent, excellent job. So you, you can see we have actually, we have, we have 20 or more different locations for the, for the race. And what we typically do. So in this June, we will be setting um, the actual lo locations where we plan to race. 
but then we will have many um, backup options. So if, if the weather is bad in one area, we will have, we will have an option to go to a, to a second area. So all of the, all of the locations can change at, at any time. So we have the, we have the optimal locations and then we have um, backups and, and you, you can see by the red dots, we've been to all these um, different areas in the Antarctic. So one of one of the locations, as um, Hernan mentioned, that we're likely to go to first is actually King King George Island, and that is roughly a thirteen um, kilometer um, uh, course. And I, I find King George to be a very interesting place because there are multiple research bases. Generally, most of the research bases are very very nice um, to us because they, they don't see people there that often. Uh, this is where the actual airstrip is is located um, for actually uh, bringing planes in and out. Um, and there's also a Russian Orthodox church there, which which is very very interesting. In 2006, we actually took a um, um, took a plane um, to King George Island and picked up a ship. Um, we have since always just taken a ship. And one of the reasons is because we feel like it is it is a much better experience to be able to be on the ship and kind of experience a bit of, of what Shackleton did. And it's also a great time to learn about the Ant Antarctic. You'll, you'll be given a lot of lectures um, from the different expedition guides. And you, it's, um, it's a great bonding experience with, the, with some of the people that you know on, on the ship and then getting to, to know others and then also maybe talking to the ship um, captain. So there, there you can see also on, on King George Island. So that is one of our easiest landing lo locations. And you can see some of the research bases. I think the, I think the um, kind of orange one, I think that's actually the, um, the, the Russian re research base. Um, and, and here, another location that we really like going to is, um, is, is a little island called Deception Island. Um, and there's actually several locations where that we can run here be, because it is, is the, um, the caldera of, of a volcano. What, what happens is it normally snows at night, but, but then the, the snow melts during the day. So normally the uh, running here is, is very, very nice because the snow isn't um, that deep, but it is an absolute um, beautiful area. You will see the thermal beaches and you'll probably see some of the heat rising up from the from the beaches and in the bot bottom right you can see what it um, what it actually looks looks like and basically our ship will go through the bottom right which which is very very in interesting too to to see the to go through the sort of narrow um, walls um, and and here I've um, chosen a photo to just show you how kind of lo lunar like that the that the landscape is here. You can see some of the runners in the in the bottom part of this photo. Um, and also I put this photo in so you can see that some of the courses are are not always deep uh, deep snow. This course. Um, this area definitely has has the opportunity to to have a very run, runnable course on on both very uh, light light snow and even some some sections where th there is no snow. Okay, and and here um, the other location that I chose to highlight is the Paradise Bay area, and this is on on the mainland of of the Antarctic. And this is um, probably one of the most beautiful places that you will ever ever be in your lifetime. And it is if it, it, if it's a sunny day, and yes, it definitely gets sunny. It is just you just have to pinch your, yourself to believe that you are running in this um, absolutely beautiful place. And here is another um, here's another photo from Paradise Bay. Okay, this this other location that I'm highlighting is is also one of my um, favorites because there are some mountains in the in the background, and it's also the location of the Antarctic's um, only uh, post office, which is actually managed by the um, by the British, um, and it's called Port uh, Lockroy, and it too is a very um, pretty place. It's it's an in interesting place in, in that every time that I've been there, normally. Um, 
normally the weather has started out incredibly sunny and then it can change uh rapidly so it is a very it it's just a very magical place and this um this is a location where uh you will also probably have have the opportunity to get your passport stamp uh with with the antarctic um, continent stamp and there, there is another picture from uh, Dorian Bay. So this, this hut, this is what is called a refuge hut. And this is also managed um, by, by the folks, the Brits that manage, um, that manage Port, Port Lockroy. Um, and they have recently, uh, I think, paint, painted it. So what is, what's very different about this picture is last time we were there in 2022, they, they actually had record snow. So normally um, we can see this this full um, hut. You can see that you can only really see the see the roof. So last year we did have a lot of a lot of snow. Okay, and then here here is another picture, and this this is just to just to show you that although we're out running in in these amazing places, we've always got the ship as our as our backup, and you can see there the ship is the ship is waiting um, for us. Okay, now just to go over uh, the type of e equipment that we that we need uh, to to race, and I know lots of you had uh, questions about what to um, what to wear, and you know those are those are answers that I will um, also send you at the end. But but the interesting thing is um, is actually there's very little new specialized e equipment that you actually need. So if if uh, you have ever been been skiing you have almost everything that you need um, for this race. If you've ever done a one of our hot de desert races or one of the other Race on Planet Ultramarathons, you also have a good portion of what you need for, for this race. So don't take a look at the gear list and say, oh my God, I have to buy everything new. There are, there are a lot of options to either um, borrow a few items or else rent, um, but it's a it's a very um, manageable list. So how does it work with the with the gear? Okay, yes, there there is a um, you know there is a fifty um, a fifty point list of gear that you you need, but we only have a minimal a amount of gear that you need for each race for each section. So what that we normally do the previous night we actually put a list out. In, in the ship and it outlines everything that that you need to have in your personal backpack for for that stage and then we also have a second list which um which is a drop bag a 65 liter drop bag and we have backup items that you you must carry in that bag and that bag is left by the finish line and once you finish each day you can access your uh, drop bag and change your clothes so so that you can um, start getting warm after after each stage. Now, what is what is very different about this this race der, um, versus our hot desert races is you you do not have to carry all of your food in your pack, and in fact, you will not be allowed to carry food with you, but rather you will have that food um, at at a place by the start finish line where that you will eat when you um, when you pass by. There are very, very strict rules about food types in the Antarctic, which I'm not gonna go over in great detail now, but it's something that we will um, definitely go over for all of those who are registered for the race. And you can see this just, um, this just shows you sort of the list. This list is actually on the on the website, um, on the last last desert website under the equipment section. And some some of the key items, the waterproof bag, 65 liter, um, micro spikes, um, those are uh, those are mandatory. Those are those are probably something that you'll either have to borrow or or buy. Um, gators, um, and waterproof trousers, you'll have to um, bring different types of um, tops with different weights. Um, parka jacket, some people rent, lease the parka jacket um, before the race. And then also glacier goggles and ski goggles, which we can explain what the um, difference is in a greater detail later. And then a, a balaclava and a neo neoprene mask. Now, the interesting thing is with the Antarctic gear list, I would say almost everything on the list, most people use um, during the race. There might be 
one or one or two items that are that are not used, but it's but it's been my experience in the past that most items are are used during the the week. And then the last thing we'll have you bring is just a uh, kind of cheap uh, plastic container, like a sort of Tupperware thing, where to which you will keep your food um, in for the for the duration of each stage. And then here is just another list of all of the different um, gear that you will carry and wear, and then that food, and then those items that will go in your drop bag, and then also a, a separate food bag. Okay, just um, briefly going over the food, um, the food in the Antarctic. So we have to follow rules but, um, from an organization called IAATO, and the rules are, are very strict and their rules change every year. We actually go above and, and beyond what, what they ask of us. Um, we are even, even stricter than what they ask of us. But it is um, there are some pros and cons. The pros are you, you don't have to carry the food in your um, back, backpack. Um, some, some of the cons are that you, you might be used to eating at a, a certain time. And with, uh, with this outline, you have to, you have to eat in a, a certain, certain area on each stage. Uh, we will also um, we will also have hot water available on a certain some of the certain longer stages if, if that you wanted to make a freeze dried meal. Again, these are just really e examples of food that you should or shouldn't bring. But this is not set in stone at at this point because the organization changes their rules every year. Okay, and this is just a photo to, to show you how when you get dropped off in the Zodiacs on shore, you're gonna typically have two bags. You're gonna have one is the 65 liter bag where you'll have your um, parka, some of the um, emergency gear that, that we ask you to carry, which will be left at the start line. And the second bag is just a very much a, like a Sea to Summit 35 liter bag. And that will actually have your food in it and that will be kept on a separate tarp and you will actually have access to that um, to that bag dur during during every stage and you can see too the people are wearing the boots that have been given to them by the by the ship okay and just another picture um, of one of one of the racers in 2022 you can see he's got the normal you know water bottles on he's got a vest you don't have to wear any of the patches on your sleeves. The only patch that we give you is a big round last desert pack um, that you put on the back of your back backpack. But pretty pretty much you can almost wear similar clothes to what you wear to the races except layer layer them. And some some pr prefer to, to wear more of a sort of waterproof um, Gore-Tex type uh, type jacket. And here, here is another, the two water bottles in the front, a very light kind of Gore-Tex jacket, gloves. You can see the, the uh, goggles on. You can really um, bring normal ski, ski goggles. That they are incredibly helpful and useful. Okay, just um, moving on for those who are interested in the friends and family experience. So we are, um, we are going to have three uh, three types of groups on the ship. Okay, one will will be the racers doing the last desert. Um, one will be the friends and uh, family, and the third will um, will be those who are actually there to take part in the Antarctic Ultra Marathon, which Carlos will explain shortly. And all of these three groups will be will be led by a. Um, by a separate um, person and every each group will have the most amazing experience of of their life so there's there's really there's 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 not so much difference in in the opportunities that that everyone will um, have so basically how does the friends and family experience work um, 
Well, basically, you you have the option to do kind of the normal uh, tourist act activities, which I will explain shortly. You also have the opportunity to volunteer. You can go out. You can help us to mark the course by filling um, the bags with the snow. You can also um, help us to keep score at the finish line. Or if you don't want to do anything at all, you can just sit on the ship and take it easy and just look at the amazing views. So it re really depends on, on you. And new for 2024, you have the opportunity to take part in the Antarctica Ultra Marathon. And how, how does that work? Well, that is going to give people the opportunity to run as much as they would like on one stage, run or hike. And basically you will get a medal for doing either 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon or an ultra marathon. And we will have a winner of whoever uh, races the most distance for the Antarctica ultra marathon. So that's going to be something really, really exciting. If you have, you know, friends that would love to go to the Antarctic, but also want to experience a, a little of what you are going through, this is going to be perfect for them. So, and then, and then if, if, you, um, if you want to take place in some of the things that the um, tourists do, you can also go on things like you can do Zodiac tours where you see the icebergs and the wildlife. You can do snow, snowshoeing, hiking, mountaineering. You can visit the research bases, the church and the post office. You can kayak and you can also, um, you can also camp. And basically, what is it? Um, what to um, the friends and family also? They have all all of the meals in, in, included for the week. So basically, it is it is it is exactly what those taking part in the last um, desert get. And everyone will have the opportunity to listen to different lectures from the expert guides. Um, and these, these are really great when you're crossing uh, the Drake Passage both ways. They will teach you about everything from, you know, the different types of penguins to the to the whales. They'll give you some they'll give you some history on the politics of of the Antarctic. They'll tell you about icebergs, about krill, sort of everything. I found them to be the most interesting. Okay, and then new um, for 2024, um, I'm gonna actually pass this over to Carlos Garcia, who is going to be managing this. And Carlos will explain the Antarctica Ultramarathon to you. Carlos. Hi, Mary. Hi, everyone. I'm very, very happy to be here and very happy to be part of this uh, brand new Antarctica Ultramarathon. I was uh, I was pretty lucky because I have been in um, in Antarctica two times. One I was uh, racing, and the other one <clears throat> the other one was setting a course. So uh, it was really like a, an amazing experience. As uh, you know, as Hernan was uh, trying to explain uh, when he lost the signal. Uh, is that Antarctica looks like a, like a different world? Looks like you are not in this planet. I mean, it's it's like a part of the of the Earth that is completely different as anything I've seen. And believe me, I've seen quite a lot of places. And um, our idea is that, uh, as Mary was uh, saying, um, Antarctica is not. Uh, it's not the Antarctica race is not an easy is not an easy race okay and uh, we really would like to uh, have this experience for more people if you are uh, a runner but you don't want to or you don't uh, believe that you can uh, run as, as long as 250 kilometers then uh, we give you this is the chance that you can go to the Antarctica and run. And um, the, the 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 idea that we have is that we are going to do the same as the racers are going to do, but we will have prizes for the people that will complete the five kilometers, for the people that will complete the 10 kilometers, half marathon, a full marathon, and the full ultra marathon distance that will be hopefully. 100 uh, kilometers. When I say hopefully, is as Mary was saying before, because um, everything in Antarctica depends on the weather. Uh, it's amazing how the weather changes so 
dramatically and so quick. So we have to, we have, we are always in contact with, uh, with the boat. And as, as, as uh, if, if there is any situation that we have to leave, we just leave. But if we, if we can do it, we will be doing the, on the first day, the Antarctica ultramarathon. Um, we don't have too many places. So if you have friends and family that want to join, we really encourage you to get in touch with uh, Sam and Mary and, and, and sign because this is really a, an experience that you will never forget. This is uh, going to Antarctica is completely different, different experience. And um, uh, there is one thing I recommend <clears throat> that besides the lectures that you will have on the boat, by uh, biologists and uh, guides and mountain guides and all kinds of people that there is uh, that are on the boat and they they will explain you a lot of things about Antarctica about the uh, animals and everything. One of the things that I normally do is I take one uh, book with me that uh, in this case I will suggest to take one book book of Shackleton or Scott or or Nansen that. You know, you, you will be reading the same book as, as the places that they visit, and that would be an experience that uh, it will it will uh, elevate uh, the experience to another level. So, uh, really, I think it's going to be an amazing amazing thing. And uh, I don't know, I haven't uh, we haven't gone uh, like in in depth uh, on the material on the on the mandatory items and everything. But I will leave you a, a hint here because I've been using in the in when when uh, the weather is like this in Antarctica, some some like the weather similar to what you will find there. I uh, I will suggest to use uh, um, waterproof socks, and uh, there are a couple of brands in uh, that uh, manufacture that, and they are absolutely fantastic. I try them and they work very very well. So. Uh, I'm here. I will be setting the course. I'm not sure if I'm going to find any river crossings or if we are going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to make your experience as nice as I enjoy when I was there. So any questions, I'm here. Thank you so much, Carlos. That was great. Thank you. And then uh, once you're you're done with the Antarctica Ultramarathon, or even if you didn't do the Antarctica Ultramarathon, the other options for the family and friends are the Zodiac Cruises. You can see beautiful, um, just basically going out, taking photographs of seals. This is actually a seal by an old whaling boat on Deception Island. Um, and here you also have the option of camping. So you can camp on, on the Antarctic. And then you, you can also kayak. And you don't have to have any experience to kayak. The guides will um, show, show you exactly what, what to do. And then here, you can just look at some more of the beautiful landscape. These are, these are some penguins just uh, swimming among the ice in, in the Antarctic. And here you'll find this is another refuge hut um, on the Antarctic, and and a lot of the refuge hut, huts, a lot of the penguins will take up sort of sort of home there, and they build the pen, penguins colonies, so they can be very very pretty. This picture, this photograph was actually taken on Peterman Island. We actually raced on Peterman Island in 2022. Okay, so let me just go over um, some frequently asked um, questions. Um, Okay, so what what is is the terrain like? Well, the terrain can be can be light light snow. It can be deep snow. Um, there are some sections that can can be muddy. It can be it can be dry um, dirt. You can have some small um, smallish rocks. Um, do do we have a lot of ele elevation gain? Um, typically, um, typically not. Okay, what is what is the hardest part of the race? So I've asked I've asked many many of, of the four hundred people over, over since two thousand and six, and and I would say that that the majority of them have said just the un, unknown, 
knowing that things could change at, at any time. That was actually the most difficult part of the race. Some have said that it was the most difficult race that they did. Others have said it was the easiest race that, that they've done. So it, it, it really depends on the, on the person. But one, one thing that I've heard from everyone, they've said it's been the most spectacular place that they've ever, ever been in their lives. Um, how is the course marked? I show you the course will be um, generally marked with um, with pink bags, which are full of snow. From from time to time, we will also put some some sticks, um, some poles out there if if the snow is is really deep. Um, what happens if if you reach 250 kilometers? Well, those who reach 250 kilometers have um, gone back to the ship and enjoyed a nice beer. So once, once you reach 250 kilometers, you can actually stop at that point. You're welcome to stay with the, with the rest of, of the race or you can go back to the ship. So there is one, one hint um, that I should mention. No one has really reached 250 kilometers until the last stage. Okay, what, what happens if no one completes 250 kilometers? Well, we, we've known that the weather is, is a very unknown in the Antarctic. So um, basically it is whoever completes the most kilometers in the, in the Antarctic will, will win. Is, is there a number of minimum kilometers that you have to complete? No, but that said, you um, have to keep, keep going on the course e each day and you can only spend a limited amount of time at the, at the different um, rest points, which are typically by the start um, finish line. Okay, can anyone join the last the last desert, the friends and family experience, or the Antarctic Ultramarathon? So to to join the last desert, the qualifications are that you have to have completed um, two of our uh, our seven day two hundred fifty kilometer ultra marathons. Um, those can be any races completed from two thousand and. Um, three until the uh, until the last desert 2024 takes part. So you just have to complete two. It doesn't have to be a four deserts race. It can also be one of the Racing the Planet ultra marathons. Normally, it is just the four deserts races, but in 2024, um, we are we are opening it up to anyone who has done any um, of the four deserts or the Racing the Planet ultra marathons. Uh, friends and family, all that you have to do, you have to know someone who is taking part um, in, the, in the race. It can be a spouse, it can be a friend, it can be me, it can be Sam, Carlos, you just have to know someone and then sign up. And then the same goes for the uh, for the Antarctica Ultra Marathon. It really operates very much like the friends and family. You just have to know someone who is taking part in the race to um, sign up and register. And these these three programs are going to all operate si side by side, and and everyone will have the absolute time of of their lives. Okay, how, how do you get, get to Ushuaia? So most actually fly in through Buenos Aires. Um, a more limited number fly in through uh, Santiago, Chile. There are lots of flights once you get to Buenos Aires to Ushuaia. You, you, you won't have any, any problem finding flights. Um, Okay, how, how about the weight of my backpack? You've probably seen the, the long gear list, 50, 50 items worried about the, the backpack. Actually, the truth is the backpacks are much lighter than what, what you typically wear on a regular hot desert race because you're keeping, um, you're keeping your food in a separate item by the start finish line, which normally makes up a large part of your uh, backpack weight and the rest of the items are, are fairly, um, fairly light. Okay, what what is the drop bag for? I think we've um, we've uh, gone over this. It's to keep really, um, it's to keep items so that you can get warm quickly after you stop running. And it's also it's also uh, will contain emergency um, gear just in case for some reason that we couldn't get back to the ship. You'll have everything that that you need to uh, to camp on shore. Has it ever happened that we've had to camp on shore? No but you, you never know. Uh, can, can I bring snow, snowshoes? Um, the, the answer is yes, but if you, if you bring your own snowshoes and wear them, uh, you will have to keep them with you during, uh, during the whole race. I actually, I don't 
recommend bring, bringing snowshoes. Number one, they're they're very bulky, and really they only work um, for, for a very limited time on each stage. And for those who who plan to to do do snowshoeing each day outside of the last desert race, the ship actually has plenty plenty of snowshoes, so you can actually wear the ones from from the ship. I I also borrow the ship this uh, ship snowshoes. Okay, and then a question I think I answered earlier too. Why, why don't you fly to, to the Antarctic? We did in 2006, we flew to King George Island, landed on the strip, picked up a ship. It is, it is a much better experience to actually, um, to meet in, in Ushuaia, take the ship over the Drake Passage and then take the ship back to the, to the Drake Passage. So it creates an overall better experience. Uh, will, will I see penguins? As I said, I guarantee you, you will see penguins. Okay. And then, and then what is the cost of the last desert? So for, uh, for an actual racer, and that is someone who has, uh, who has met the qualifications, completed two of the four deserts racing planet ultramarathons, uh, the cost is 13,900 US dollars for uh, friends and family and those taking part in the Antarctica Ultramarathon, it's $12,900. Okay, um, so some top tips before I bring a couple of the racers on who have um, who have done the race before. Um, I would definitely arrive in, in, in Ushuaia a couple days before the ship set sail. And there's a, there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, it, it is a very cool, nice town. And secondly, um, travel uh, can be very difficult in this day. The, the ship absolutely will not wait um, for you. So you, you definitely don't, don't want to miss the uh, ship as it as it set sail. Um, secondly, we would uh, recommend bringing seasick medication. Um, some, I would say, most get get a bit queasy over the Drake Passage. Interesting. I've actually never never been sea seasick, but there's always a first. Um, and make sure that you are ready for four four seasons in one day. Those of you who who live in Scotland, you are you are probably used to the four four seasons in one day. Um, so bring multiple clothing items um, for the different uh, weather that changes. And then and then remember to always be flexible. And then most importantly, always give way to the penguins. Um, Okay, now I wanted to, um, before I go over some other final questions, I wanted to bring on uh, Dr. Walker, who actually completed, uh, completed the course, I believe in 2018. And she also, um, she actually guided a blind racer all the way through, through the Antarctic. So um, she was gonna come on and, and give, give you a few tips, Rebecca. Yeah, Rebecca. thanks, Mary. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, I can't echo enough just how amazing it was to to have the honor of going to Antarctica with these guys. Um, and one thing that Carlos said was with the equipment of the waterproof socks, I, um, I used those finally on the very last day and I wished I had used them the whole time. Um, and there's a couple different brands, but Seal Skins is the one I used. Um, and it was so great. It kept me so warm. And I also, I'm happened to be skiing this weekend and I have these, these hand warmer things that I think are really useful to, to take hand warmers and put them in your gloves and they keep your hands warm the whole time. Um, but the terrain was just so varied. And I know that that is because of the race in the planet research and that really goes into kind of designing the course so that you get to see so many different aspects of Antarctica, um, the island with all the research stations and the Paradise Bay and just different, just so many different terrains and the, the icebergs really stood out to me. They're just, they're so amazing and so small, um, some of them. And the I read that Endurance, the book Endurance about Shackleton's adventure um, every night. And it just really put it in perspective, um, just sort of reading about those, the iceberg and the glaciers at night and then going out and running among them. It was just kind of a really cool experience. Um, I was 
partnered in my room with one of the um, just regular tourists. So I got to hear about her day and she was kayaking and, you know, just kind of going on the island um, as well. And one thing I noticed is I, I didn't really eat much during the day because we really had so such great breakfasts and dinners. I was I don't know if it was because I wasn't hungry because you're cold, um, but it, I didn't have to eat very much. So I don't I don't think I needed to take as much food for, on this race um, compared to other races. I did not train any differently um, for this race. And I have done four other uh, race in the planet races or three other. Um, and the food that you do eat during the day will freeze. And so things that are easy to eat kind of like while they're very cold is, is a good idea. Like someone mentioned nuts. I think that's a really good one. Um, some of the bars can be really hard to chew if they're sort of hard bars to start with and then they're frozen. Um, so think about what you can eat while frozen. I, I anticipate maybe some of the gels would be good because they they just could break off easily. Um, and yeah, as far as equipment, I just use like shoes with little micro spikes on them, um, the hand warmers and the socks were the big things. Um, and we ran through a blizzard. It was so amazing. We just, you know, you look out and there's just so much snow and, um, the pictures are amazing from that. And, uh, as Mary mentioned, I've guided a blind runner, Vladmi, who many of you might know. Um, and that was amazing. He was my first two days. I was super focused on making sure that he didn't get hurt. I was really paranoid about that at the beginning. And then he, he's a really sure footed person. And we ran at a, at kind of a good speed that we think we were, were good partners in that, in the speed as well. Um, I spoke Spanish to him and then he would speak back to me in Portuguese. And so for me, I think that communication throughout the week was really interesting for me because I was trying to learn Portuguese and, and just practicing my Spanish, um, and so I think that made it really a highlight for me to kind of hear his life story um, throughout the week. And I had never guided anyone on a long run. Um, so that was really cool. And just his, I think the first day was his birthday. And so we did, you know, it was a rough first day. It was raining and we were cold. And then he was so happy just because it was his birthday. And I was, it was such a great start to the whole trip. So it was a super fun uh, experience. I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys might have too. Okay, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And now um, we're gonna talk to Karen from the Netherlands. Uh, Karen was in, uh, completed the last desert in 2022. So she is now in the Four Deserts Club. Karen. Hi, Mary, thanks for Hi, having Karen. me. Hey. I'm joined by my penguin friends. <laughs> um, so just so you know, if you do this race, after that, you will only get penguin gifts, <laughs> which is great, by the way. <laughs> so I've got some tips about gear. Um, I'd say your outer layer is by far the most important one. Make sure it is very much waterproof, also very much windproof because on those zodiacs the wind is blowing and uh, especially after running you get cold very easily so make sure you've got a very solid outer layer um i know many people are worried about their feet and about their toes getting cold i'm notorious for having cold toes um and i wore waterproof socks and waterproof shoes and waterproof gaiters and I didn't have any cold toes for the whole week. So that will be definitely my top tip. And bring some uh, washing line. I'm not sure if that's the right word. Bring some washing line and some pins so you can hang your damp clothing in your cabin. That's very, very, very convenient because you will get wet. And um, when it comes to training, I focused on extra strength training. Be prepared for knee-deep snow. 
especially at the beginning of each stage before you make a path. So you will have to bring up those knees very high to, to get through that very deep snow. So focus on glutes and upper legs, make sure they're ex extra strong. Um, and my last tip would be, if you have the capacity to do this race, financially, time-wise, etc., do it because I will guarantee you it will be the best experience you ever have, regardless of any place you've ever been to. Antarctica is definitely something else. So if you've got the financial means and you've got the time to do it, do it. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Karen, for that. And that is a that is a beautiful penguin. I also have a penguin with like um, Christmas lights on it here. I, I, I swear the, the other thing is everyone will fall in love with with penguins and, and you you don't realize how amazing they are until you actually see them in person. You, you can't see them in, in a zoo. You can't see them on TV. You have to see them in person. And they are like li little people. Great. Thanks, Karen. Um, okay. Um, I just have a, there were, there were a number of questions sent, sent in. Um, a lot of the questions we've gone over, but I've just, I've uh, picked a few um, questions out to answer. And then I'm going to open the floor um, for any questions you want to ask me or any questions you want to ask um, Karen or Rebecca or um, Carlos. Um, okay. So one of, one of the questions um, what that I got was, is there an opportunity to, to go to the, to the South Pole? And uh, the, the answer to, to that is uh, really no. You either, um, if you wanna to go to the South Pole, you do that kind of separately on a separate plane from uh, Chile. So the, the, uh, the great thing about the Antarctic um, Peninsula is you have all the fabulous wild, wildlife there. You have the orca, you know, orca whales, you have every, you know, you got like seven different types of, of penguins, you have spectacular la landscape. So they are two very, um, very, very different um, places. Okay, the other um, one, one of the other uh, questions that I had was what is the best way to get the, um, to get clothing? And I think that you have to first look at what that you currently have. And my guess is you probably have most of what you need if you've ever, you know, been to a cold, cold weather place or, or either done one of our races and then talk to others who have maybe done, done the race um, or any friends and, you know, family that you have and borrow. And then uh, last Look, look to actually rent. There are some places in, in Ushuaia where you can rent parkas and different, um, different items. Okay, another, um, another question um, that I got is how many, how many calories do you, do you need per, per day? And I would say too, the, the same way with the, with the hot desert races, you should really look at it as, um, as per sort of hour. Um, and bring bring more calories than you you need each day because well number one you don't actually have to have to carry the the food so why not and um, but and you can you know it is possible um, you know that you you are out there for a sort of sort of for a very very long time. Um, the, the other question that I had was, well, how do I get the seasickness patches because I I live in a country where they're not sold. Well. Actually, the ship the ship will also sell the the sea sickness patches at a re very reasonable um, price. So, what I would do if you absolutely cannot um, get them, then the first thing that you do when you get on the ship is actually um, or well, when you when when you get get on the ship, purchase some. But actually, if you can't find them in your country, also also speak to me because you probably have to put on the patch before we we actually set set sail. Um, Okay, and then um, and then the the other one, which which I think was partly covered, is what type of shoes do I need? I think um, without doubt we we recommend a Gore-Tex um, type of shoe. We we don't generally recommend Gore-Tex for any of our other races because your feet will um, will sweat. The the Gore-Tex have have been found to to really work well in our races. 
And we actually, as part of the mandatory gear list, have you bring two pairs of shoes because, because one pair may, may uh, get, get really uh, wet. And then also if something happens to, to your shoes and they break, you don't want to go all the way down to the Ant Antarctic and not have a pair of shoes to, to race in. Okay, so there are there are um, several other other questions, and I will send all the answers to you in, in the email I send with um, with the video recording link. So now I'm going to open up the floor to any um, any questions that you might have. Um, let's see, let's un unmute. I, I guess if you if you have a question, just un unmute your um, screen. Uh, any questions, Sally? I see it. See you there. Any any questions from 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 Australia? I had a quick question. Yes. Um, so for the on the shoes, are they like for Gore-Tex? Are they typically like Gore-Tex running shoes? Or are they more like Gore-Tex hiking boots? Run uh, running shoes. Running shoes. Okay. And if it, could you put maybe together a list of brands that people have used just. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. They should. They should be on our on our gear list. But yeah, I I can just be very specific on that. It's hard when you have size fifteen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Usually you get the box. <laughs> and I don't think they make it. I don't think they make a Gore-Tex box. <laughs> Uh, if it if it makes you feel better, Patrick, generally like normal trail running shoes, ideally Gore-Tex is what people use. Like having a special type of shoe for Antarctica isn't necessary, okay. but you do have the micro spikes that you have to bring. That might be a problem for size 15, so it's worth trying them first. But they're stretchable; they sort of small, medium, large, and those putting those on the bottom add the extra grip. Because I have like these are like Gore-Tex like hiking boots, but that might be a little much. I would that's say true. that's a little much unless you were going to use that anyway for a normal race. Right. Like if you were planning on walking, hiking it. Yeah. Pa Patrick, if I can add to this, um, you have to think of the fact that you will wear thick socks. So you will need an extra, you need to upsize for about a size because of your thick socks. So that will be 16 for you, I think. Luckily, so make sure make sure you've got your make sure you've got your socks before you go shoe shopping. Right, right. Luckily in Austin we have a shop called Big Shoes that sells sizes up to size twenty two. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for that. Hi Mary and everybody else. Just a question. I think I've read everything, but I haven't found out. Do you recommend any particular accommodation in Ushuaia? We'll, we'll be getting a list of places that you'd recommend to book into. Uh, yes, um, Sally, we, we actually have a document that we'll be sending out, essential race in, information, and we re recommend places to um, stay. There are loads of places to, to stay there, and we, we have some very helpful tips. But, you know, as I mentioned, it is a it's a really charming town. So so pay it definitely pays to get get there a couple days early. Thank you. I want to just say, Mary, it's good to see your face after all this time. Yeah, who who is that? I can't see the. Uh, that's Patrick. Patrick yeah, Griggs. Pat, Patrick Griggs. Hey there, Patrick. I know it's been years. So Patrick and I go way way back. It's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, and it's good. Um, actually, we we also have on the call here Gunnar Gunnar Fain. Gunnar's doing the last oh, yeah. episode for his second time. Oh wow. That's old school. No, it's a um, you know, it's it's my it will be my tenth time, and everyone says, "Well, don't don't you get tired of of going there?" And I can say it is so different every time. And every time that I'm down there, I really have have to pinch my, myself to say, "Oh my God, I'm 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 actually working here." And it is just the most um, fabulous place. And even what, when when I was doing the presentation, I was going back through the photos, and I was just getting really excited. I mean, it is just it is just such a special place. 
Very. Um, I remember that when I did my my uh, Antarctica travel uh, racing, when I was a racer, I remember, I don't remember where it was. I think it was Paradise Bay, but I'm not sure. But uh, because of the weather, that was very, very unstable. We, uh, the, the course uh, design was made in a 400 meter loop. And I was, I was thinking like, oh, God, oh my God, this is going to be like a mice in a cage. I mean, this is going to be super boring. Well, the fact is that once we started running, there was not one minute that I thought about that. I, I, I was looking at the landscape and saying like, wow, every time. Yeah, uh, we were we were in a 400 meter loop like for five <laughs> hours and a half or something like that, and not even one minute I thought it was boring, and that that was that's the only place it happens to me because you know and otherwise uh, you you are always like thinking okay I want to finish this and go home or whatever but not in Antarctica, no. Antarctica is absolutely incredible. So yeah. And and the weather, it, it, you know, it's it's magical too to really experience the the weather, the the four seasons in one day, and how quickly the weather can change. And 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 then to 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 be running and have a seal like come on onto your course, this big like you know seal that weighs sort of hundreds of pounds, just like laying laying there. <laughs> yeah. Just asking here, David David uh, Nicholson, you had a lot of questions in the chat did we answer everything or is there anything you want to ask to to mary or carlos directly no yeah you answered all the questions uh, my main concern is is renting the equipment in ushuaia and getting it early before everybody else so going to start planning very early next year thanks sam and uh, mary for the call you're it's, certainly welcome david it's a strange one in ushuaia because there is plenty of gear available but it is quite hard to get hold of some of them in advance yeah, you'll be in a better situation because you speak Spanish, but Mary will send out the options to you all. Yeah, I think I've I've um, already sent the gear list to at least the last desert um, participants, and that has a that that has has a contact for the for the rental place. But yeah, I'm I'm happy to answer any any questions. Happy to get on a call at any time if if anyone has questions, but. Um, I mean, I'm really looking looking forward to seeing everyone there. It's um, it's just ma magical, as I've said, and and we have a great a great team in in place. Oceanwide is, um, you know, it's a fabulous uh, ship. The Plancius, um, our guide is like our expedition leader is likely to be someone that we've worked with um, several times in the past, um, and we've got a we've got fantastic um, course team, uh, Carlos and Hernan, and we've got I think. Um, Tiago, are are you possibly on the call? Well, I'm here. Okay, I'm Tiago is going to be taking some more amazing photos. Oh yeah, it's, I mean, it's, you can't really get it wrong over there, can you? You can you can just point your camera somewhere, close your eyes, and click, and you'll you'll get the picture. <laughs> but it def it definitely is the 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 top i think the most incredible race of them all and uh special and uh every time it's over i'm ready I, I can't wait for the next one so yeah i'm super anxious for the next one and i and i really recommend everyone to go see one of the most uh special places on earth absolutely that's great well uh um, thank you, everyone. If you have any other um, questions, get, get in touch with me personally. You can see my um, email address. You can also send it to the info at raceintheplanet.com account, and I can answer any, any questions. I'll be following up with an email with a link and an answer to the questions that you submitted um, as you were registering for the Zoom call. And I can't th thank you enough for joining us on this Sunday and also Monday if you're in uh, parts of Asia and, and Australia and New, New Zealand. Okay, everyone, see you later.